Hello and welcome to another episode of Maths with Mrs. Banks, where we make maths fun and easy to learn. And if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos we upload. In this video, we're going to focus on the relationship between common fractions, percentages, and decimal fractions. And this work is made for grade 6 and 7 learners, but grade 8 and grade 9 learners can also use this to revise. Now let's start. In this question, we're given the instruction, copy the table and fill in the missing values. We're given a percentage in one column, two decimal fractions in another column, and a common fraction in one column. And we're supposed to convert this from one form to the other two forms that are missing. And we're going to start with the percentage one because that's the easiest one to work with. But before we do that, let's define the meaning of percent. Percent simply means a number over 100. For example, 5% means 5 over 100. 10% means 10 over 100. And 200% means 200 over 100. Yes, we do have percentages that go over the 100% limit. And we use that in subjects like accounting, which is part of economic and management sciences, to indicate growth in profits or growth in revenue and the growth in business and whatever other factor we're looking at. Now back to the table. We're supposed to convert 40% into first a common fraction because that is the easiest thing to do with for a start. Now, let's start. 40 over 100, that's what 40% means. 40 over 100. That is equal to, right, now the first thing we do is we simplify this. We cross off the common zeros. It's one zero that we cross off at the top. So we also cross off one zero at the bottom in the denominator. And that leaves us with 4 over 10. Now, we simplify this because we're supposed to leave our common fractions in a simplified form. So we go, how many times does a common factor between the two, which is two, how many times does two go into four? It goes two times. And how many times does two go into 10? It goes there five times. So our answer is two over five. And that is the common fraction that corresponds to 40%. So that's two over five. Now let's change this common fraction 2 over 5 into a decimal. Next, so we've got 2 over 5 that we're supposed to turn we change into a decimal fraction. And this is how we do it. We go, how many times does the denominator, in this case 5, go into the numerator, in this case 2? Zero times. 5 is bigger than 2, so... There's no way you can have fives there in two. And we go up there to two and we add a small zero and that changes into 20. Now we go, how many times does five go into 20? Use the five times table to figure that answer out. We go five, 10, 15, 20, and it's four times. So five goes into 20 four times and we write that here after a comma. And it leaves no remainder, so that is the last digit we write. There, so we go back and we fill in the answer, 0, 0,4. Uh, let's take the next question as a decimal, which is 0, 0,2. And let's first convert that into a common fraction because that's easier. Right, so we go 0, 0,2. Zero comma two, zero comma two, that will be equal to. So what you do is you write the number that is after a decimal, all of the numbers. So you go two, in this case, over one. And how many zeros depend on how many digits after a comma you have. In this case, we've got one digit after a comma so it is one over i mean two over 
10, which is 1 and 1, 0. If we had, for example, 0, 1, 2, we would say, we would write the number 1, 2 over 1 with 1, 2. We've got two digits after a comma, so we would have to write that with two zeros at the bottom. And that's how we would convert that. Now back to our question at hand. Now you simplify this. 2 over 10. You go, how many times does 2, which is a common factor between 2 and 10, how many times does 2 go into? 2, it goes once. And into 10, it goes 5 times. And that gives you your answer as, so let me fix that 5. Let me fix that 5. This is 5. So let's fix it. 5. Alright, that is equal to 1 over 5. Now let's go back to the table and fill in the answer. That's 1 over 5 here. 1 over 5. Now let's change this 1 over 5 into a percentage. 1 over 5 into a percentage. We go 1 over 5 is equal to... So what you do here is you draw a line. And write that 1 over 5. The goal here is to change the denominator and multiply it by a number that will make it turn it into a 100. The number that will multiply 5 by 2, make it a 100, is 20. But what we do to the bottom, the denominator, we must also do to the numerator at the top. So we also multiply that by 20. The basic reason why is because ultimately... It doesn't really change anything because these two can cancel each other out. However, it changes how the fraction now looks. And it will look like what we're trying to get, a percentage. Which is equals to 1 times 20 at the top, that's 20, over 5 times 20, that's 100. These are equivalent fractions. They don't change much in terms of the proportion they just change how the fraction looks and that gives us obviously so now you can read 20 over 100 remember the definition of percent that is simply equals to 20 percent and that's how you get your percentage there and let's go back to the table and fill in that 20 percent so that's 20 percent Now let's attack 0, 0,05. Let's change that into a common fraction first and then take it back to a percentage. 0, 0,05 simply means 0, 0,05 simply means 0, 0,05 simply means if you change that into a common fraction, remember that means 0, 0,5 over 1 and how many? Digits do we have after a comma two one two? So that is two zeros, and that makes it easy to define now. That is five over hundred, which is simply five percent. I'm getting ahead over myself here. That is five percent, but I couldn't uh, help it. Now let's uh, simplify this into a common fraction that is simplified. Now, the common factor between 5 and 100 is 5. 5 goes into 5 once and into 120 times. So the common fraction here is 1 over 20. And the percentage is 5%. Now, let's go back and fill those in. 1 over 20 and 5%. 1 over 20 is the common fraction yes, 1 over 20 and then 5% is the percentage 5% is the percentage here now the last one we're given a common fraction 3 over 8 we're supposed to convert that 
into both a decimal fraction and a percentage. A decimal fraction is the easiest thing to start with in terms of conversion. And then we'll deal with the percentage later, which will be much easier after we convert it into a decimal fraction. Now let's go. 3 over 8. 3 over 8. 3 over 8 is equal to... Now we go, how many times does 8 go into 3? That's 0. And then we add a small 0 on top. Now we're going to use and need the 8 times table here. I've got that prepared for us to make it easy for us. Now we go, how many times does 8 go into 30? Using the 8 times table, that should be easy for us to figure out. Now how many times does 8 go into 30? The first number we find is 24 and the second one is 32. But 32 is bigger than 30. So we cross that off and we use the 1 that is closest to 30 but not bigger than 30. Both are close to 30 but this one is bigger and this one is smaller. So we take the smaller one and use it. Now we go. 8 goes into 30. Three times. Eight goes into thirty three times. So we go three and leaves a remainder. It leaves a remainder. So that remainder is let's work out the remainder. It leaves a remainder. It goes up to twenty four. So we go thirty minus twenty four, or we go from twenty four and add up to. 30, so we go 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and that gives us 3. 6, I mean, sorry. So we're left with 6 here. The remainder, and we add a 0 to make it 60. Now the question is, how many times does 8 go into 60? Go back to the times table. How many times does 8 go into 60? Now, here are the numbers we have. We've got 56 and 64 that are close to 60. 64 is bigger than 60 and 56 is smaller, so we use that one. Now, we'll see. How many times does 8 go into 60, not just 56? It goes 7 times and leaves a remainder of 56. 60 minus 56, that's 4. So it leaves a remainder. It goes 7 times and leaves a remainder of 4. 7 times and leaves a remainder of 4. 7 times, the 7 we write here. And the remainder 4 we write over here. So we cross off the 60 and we write 4. But we must write that with, we must add a little 0. Now we go. It changes into 40. We go, how many times does 8 go into 40? Back to the 8 times table. 8 goes into 40. Let's see. 8 goes into 40 exactly 5 times. And it doesn't leave a remainder. So we're good here. Can take it exactly the way it is. Now we go. 8 goes into 45 times. 8 goes into 45 times. We'll write the 5 here. Okay, let me be consistent and write it with the red. So we'll write 5 here. And it doesn't leave a remainder. So this is the final answer we have. 0, 0,375. We'll go back to the table and fill that in. 0, 0,375. 0, 0,375. 375. Let me use a red, a blue one, so it's 0, 0,375. That's the decimal fraction. Now let's change that into a percentage. That should be easy. 0, 0,35 turned into a percentage. That's 0, 0,35. 0, 0,375, I mean, is equals to we we'll write the number at the top, which is 375. 375 
over one and how many digits after a comma do we have one two three so we write three zeros at the bottom doesn't look like a percent yet but don't worry we can fix that now we go if we cross one zero at the end that means we take this comma which is after five because that can be written as three seven five comma zero 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 so what means what does it mean when we cross off one zero at the bottom it means we take this comma one digit to the left so it lands here and that means we end up with 37 comma 5 over 100 now which then makes it easy for us to figure out what the percentage is and that is 37 comma 5 percent let's go back to the table and fill in in 37 comma 5 percent 37 comma 5 percent and that is how you go from one form to the other when it comes to percentages decimal fractions and common fractions and this is the end of the video We'll see you next time in the next video.